Folks, if you're watching the live stream, uh, have it muted right now while we're just getting settled, getting ready to start, and the sound will come on uh, once we begin. All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to your first and last academic excellence of the 2021 school year. Um, you guys have been through a lot this year through COVID. You've been through Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, and uh, glad to have you guys together for the first time for academic excellence. At this time, I'll turn it over to your president, Mr. Ty Matthews. All right, please stand. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Carter. 
Shay Kirkland. Allie Lale. Katie Lale. Estefany Lewis Mora. Brandon Monters. Jacob Mull. Cody Pearsall. Imelon Phipps. Chase Pierce. Bryson Powell. Trey Powell. Jaden Price. Kaylin Shaw. Ethan Simmons. Griffin Stevens. Callie Stinson. Natalie Bay. Jonathan Velasquez Maldonado. Addison Whaley. Clay Wilson. Andy Zong. Calvin Yang. Davey Yang. Evan Yang. Let's give our all eight on roll students a big round of This next one is pretty significant as well. This was perfect attendance all school year. Let's get online on your Zooms during Plan C and Plan B, doing all your remote work on Wednesdays. Basically, you did everything you're supposed to do and never missed a beat. Emmeline Phipps. Good job. 
this time we're going to Travis Petit to the stage, the legendary coach for our 8th grade athletic awards. Alright, good morning. Um, Mr. Sain had asked me to stand up here today and you know there's always a couple of awards that we give out for our uh, student athletes. But he had asked me to speak about all the sports this year. And you know really in a year like we've had, I really don't know what to say. Um, because considering everything that we had to go through, and I know that a lot of people who, who did compete in sports this year don't realize some of the sacrifices that you all made. Um, it, was a, it was an extremely difficult year from having to do the attestation questions every day to showing up at different times for different sports. Um, you know, and then on top of that, having to take temps every day and then let alone trying to play basketball with a mask on, uh, running track with a mask on. Extremely difficult conditions, okay? And you all excelled at it. You did a great job. Um, in fact, I won't say that we're the only school in the county because I don't know that for 100% certain, but I do know that we never had a team under quarantine this year. And there's not many schools in the county that can say that at all. We didn't have a single, I believe we have 12 sports here. 12 different sports here, and we never had a single team going to quarantine. So you did what you had to do to get the seasons completed, which we really appreciate. From you know football, uh, basketball, cheerleading, soccer, volleyball, track, softball, baseball, you all did an excellent job, okay? And even though our records may not have been what we wanted them to be sometimes, you did great. Okay, under extremely difficult conditions. And one thing we can say is that our wrestling team was undefeated this year. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and I'll get straight to the awards. You know that each year we give um, Athlete of the Year, male and female Athlete of the Year. And, you know, it goes to the, the students, the coaches kind of vote. You know, they, they vote on who they want the uh, athletes to be. And, you know, it's, um, it's an honor, okay, and it's a privilege. Uh, this year, our male athlete of the year is Jacob Mull. And I have to say, if things had worked out, we, we just missed out, but Jacob was a four-sport athlete this year. He played the four sports for us, and he actually could have been the first person in Heritage history to ever have been a five-sport athlete, but it just didn't quite work out because track and baseball kind of conflicted a little bit too much, but congratulations, Jacob. And the female athlete of the year, is Sophie Adams. And now the next awards that we give out um, is called the Michael Morris Award. And Michael was a young man who was here way before you were probably even born. Okay? And tragically, he passed away in his eighth grade year. Uh, Michael was a great kid. And you know, a lot of times people sit here and they say, is the Michael Morris like best all around? Best? It's not, okay? That's not exactly what the award means. What we try to do is we try to pick the student athlete who, who represents what Michael represented for this school, okay? And Michael loved heritage, all right? He was in a bunch of different clubs. He was on student government. Yes, he played sports. And he, he wasn't always the best at whatever sport, you know, that he did. But he gave his all in everything that he ever did here at Heritage. And so that's what we try to look for. Uh, the athletes who, you know, put their teammates above themselves. The athletes who represent the spirit of what Michael was all about. 
and we feel the spirit of what heritage is all about. So this year, the Michael Morris Award uh, male goes to Ty Matthews. And the female goes to Nevea Collins.
um, they did get to advance onto the global competition, which um, we're currently in right now, and they have to resubmit next week. But what makes this one team, uh, this one eighth grader, super special is that um, they received special recognition for what they did and the piece of literature that they chose and how they chose to produce everything. And they won what's called a Da Vinci Award. Like I said, I've been in this program, I'm an alumni, I've been in this since 1989, I've never had teams earn a Da Vinci, ever. And so I want to read to you what um, this team got and what Lyrical Edwards helped to produce, because she was the one on this team. So Lyrical, can you stand up? Where are you? Get around the floor. Struggling with depression and loneliness. If you saw this video, it'd bring tears to your eyes. Uh, walks away from the edge of the cliff with a new view on life and the will to live in the team's music video based upon Edgar Allan Poe's A Dream Within a Dream. One without one piece of dialogue. And that's what's really neat about this. Many of these videos that are done have dialogue between the characters before like the video actually starts. There's no dialogue in this, not a single word outside of like the lyrics. Without one piece of dialogue to soulful music and expertly constructed computer animation told a story that drew us deeply into her despair. The creativity, workmanship, and execution of the animation combined live action and digital art so well like our heroine, we seamlessly move between the real and digital worlds. Deliberately use of color to reveal her mental state, so it goes from black and white to when she's depressed, to colorful when she sees the hope and goodness that's actually in the world. So the deliberate use of color in her mental state, scene changes between alternate realities and the toggling back and forth between the vocals of two talented singers, of which Lyrical was one, and one of the high school girls, a heritage alumni, was the other. Um, the singers enhance the story of how life is too precious. The team's originality, courage, and risk-taking associated with the subject, along with the intricate weaving between the real and virtual worlds, created such an impact on the appraisal team that tears were shed. So that was, that was wonderful, and I know great things are gonna come from this high school team with Lyrical uh, part of it, and so we anxiously await to see what results will be at the end of July. Our other team here at the eighth grade, they also competed in this Super Southeast uh, mega regional competition. Um, they competed against teams from like Louisiana, Virginia, Florida, South Carolina, and they finished First, which is which is a huge undertaking, and these kids they had to make a video based upon a video game that they created, and they had to build stuff to do or like to make this video game like a reality, and so they this video game had to have a main character, and the main character had to have superpowers or like video game kind of powers, and so they made an air gun out of old soda bottles and uh, compressed it up full of air and so their main character uh, has wind power and so he's able to like shoot people like with wind. They built a huge catapult that is out there on the nature trail and some of you might have seen the catapult that's us uh, that was sitting out in the out in the loading zone and there's other things that they had to make. It was a very technical challenge and these kids they got together and they met virtually, and I had to bring things over to their houses, such as like wood and metal and all sorts of stuff and fabric. And they pieced together everything like virtually and independently. And they too are moving on to the global competition. And all these kids have already gotten their awards uh, already and uh, before. But these kids on this technical team, we got uh, Emmeline Phipps. Can you please stand up? Cash Hickman, we got Brandon Longhurst, we 
We've got Austin Packin. Uh, we got uh, Chloe Carswell. We got Mason Kirkland. And so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So a round of applause for you. Uh, I actually have not gotten back the 8th grade math scores 
and I usually do get my eighth grade math scores prior to the awards uh, ceremony. However, my math one class had 100% students that passed the test, and every student I taught this year actually showed growth from their predicted scores based on a 2019 percentile. So I would like to give, uh, let, let everybody give them. Please stand up if you're in my house for one class. I definitely would like to uh, honor them and congratulate them for a year of hard work. And um, way to go, kids. I followed uh, Ms. Bowman's lead and I definitely handed out the awards to the students that had uh, the highest average in each of my classes. Uh, there were two students in each class, however, one class had two students tied with the highest average. Um, in my Algebra 1 class, I have Lainey Hodge and Kaylin Shaw. In my third block math class, uh, the two highest averages were Emory Clark and Ava Tangersley. In my third block class, I did have a student that uh, he emailed me any opportunity he could have to uh, ask for more work. Uh, he was a hard worker and always uh, completed his work and then saw him. The highest average goes to Connor Houston. And the other highest awards go to Kendall Bennett and Caitlin Lell.
his social studies exam. I'm sure you were all heartbroken over that. Just absolutely devastating. Um, but these students deserve recognition because maybe the beginning of the year was rough for them, but they found their stride and they figured out how to be successful. Remote, hybrid, and back in person. And they're ending the year on such a strong foot that I feel like they deserve to be recognized. We have Sophie Barnes, <laughs> Jesse Rickman, <laughs> Zach Lunsford, <laughs> Carter Miller, <laughs> Davey Yang, <laughs> Lydia Childers.
These students have 28 points or more grades on their side TOG. Dagan Thomas.
Your under, I'm sorry, your undereducated peers around the world do not experience what we experience. They do not have the convenience of clean water, regular electricity, safe roads, and especially education. All things we take for granted all of the time in the United States. All of these things require an education to make happen. I know many times students and teachers, everyone in this room, take for granted this school and what we get out of this school and this school system. We wake up some mornings and say, oh, I'm not going to go to school. It's so hard. Or we wake up and say, oh, man, I'm so glad it's summertime. Go to school. That's one to think about. There's an alternative to not having school, and I don't think we acknowledge it enough. Your award today is not a certificate or a plaque. Your award is not money for getting straight A's. Your award isn't a trip to Carowinds to Dollywood because you had a tough year and you toughed it out. Your award is opportunity in your future. Consider again your undereducated peers around the world and the awards they get. Perhaps it's a four hour round trip to collect water in a bucket or a large bag of rice and trade for a week's work in a mine. That is their award for hard work. Do you think they have a ceremony acknowledging how many buckets of water they carry without spilling a drop or how many diamonds they can find in a year in a mine? I think not. Meanwhile, your awards come from reading books, learning new math and science, being taught art and music, and most exquisite of all, sports and clubs. I mean, you get awards for doing good at these things. And that is incredible in my mind. It is also incredible in my mind that there are people, 100 million or so, your exact same age, that their intrinsic reward is the hard work they have to do because of a lack of education, because they don't have a school to go to, and do you think that they would want to go to a school? I bet if you ask them, they would say yes. Your experience with awards is quite the contrast compared to your undereducated peers around the world. Do not be disappointed if you never receive a certificate or a trophy in this entire life. The awards in the lives of Americans are built in and they have been here for a very long time. For opportunity surrounds you. And if there is no education, there is no opportunity, or very little opportunity. The opportunities that surround you are not gifts and trophies and certificates. They come in the form of a free education. As you move into high school, think about these basic opportunities. For example, at Drone High School alone, besides classes, they have 30 clubs and 16 sport teams. Not to mention that if you wanted to make a new club, you could do it. What does a club do? It's, you know, you're a group of people. You're working together. You're trying to come up, solve problems, do good for your community. Things like that. Share common interests. Things that we all like to do. Not only that, but the abundance of money and opportunities to go to a variety of different higher education opportunities, such as trade school, colleges, nursing, you name it. It's there. The opportunities are enormous, and they're here for you if you want to take them. But you have to find them. Luckily, they're usually laid out right in front of you. The awards this American experience offer you today should provide every single person in this room opportunities to advance themselves. You know, this year I've heard parents say, my kid has been robbed of the opportunity to learn this year. Yet, our check-in scores, our Math 1 EOC scores, our Social Studies EOG scores, all of your hard work and grades 
They show that learning and growth has been done through data. Not to mention that we as teachers and faculty of the school have noticed it in you as well. So yes, even under the most stressful of times, we did learn and we did grow. And I've also heard students say, I cannot learn remotely, yet we have learned much more than we would have if we had never experienced this whole thing. One last thing about this opportunity and opportunities that surround you. There have been people in America saying that somehow we need to make things better, implying America was in trouble. And still, opportunities were everywhere, around every corner for everyone in this United States. So I challenge you to take opportunities. Get out of your virtual worlds. Untangle yourselves from the social media web and seize the worldly opportunities that have been provided for you. We are so fortunate to live in a country where an educated and nurturing society, that's everyone around us, that's our communities, our schools, our churches, hospitals, friends, family, they want us to succeed. Now as you venture into high school, you enter into a growing market of opportunities, as I mentioned before. This is your life. And compared to your undereducated peers throughout the world, your pathway is mostly paved and smooth. However, the hardest part about finding that pathway in life is realizing you're already on it. Our American experience has been paved by generations of people, all of them immigrants, with the exception of indigenous people and slaves taken from their homes. But these immigrants came here. The majority of America is an immigrant route. And they came here in droves to seek opportunities. And in doing so, they find high value in education, thus establishing schools to expand upon the opportunities available to every person here. I'd like to take from my favorite president of all time, although he was gone long before I was born, John F. Kennedy, and he said something like this. I want to modify it for us today. Ask not what your education can do for you, but what can I do to be more educated? Now stand up, everyone, right now. I want you to look at each other, and I want you to clap hands and applaud each other. You did it. You got through a very tough year of school, and the experience is the award. This time, I thank our PTO. Um, they've done a great job for us this year, uh, especially the eighth grade parents, uh, Ms. Blackwell, Ms. Abernathy, uh, Ms. Aldridge, have done a phenomenal job. Also, Ms. Small has chipped in uh, occasionally. But thank you, PTO, for everything this year, for, from the gifts um, to the extra treats for our staff. You are appreciated. At this time, I recognize our SGA. We have Mr. Ty Matthews. I'll have the president introduce his cabinet. Here's uh, Vice President Landry Pritchard. Y'all can clap. <laughs> Ms. Harrison. Y'all clap again. Sit down, sir. Carter, sit down. 
Have a seat. All right, last but not least, we have Mr. Webb. Have a seat. Uh, Mr. Webb, here we go. All right, guys, real quick. Um, I'd like to echo what all your other teachers have said. Congratulations on three years here, the last of which uh, was a year unlike anyone has ever had to go through before. Uh, with that being said, though, when you go outside, we set up several different things out on the football field. All right, we've got the volleyball net out there, which is on its last leg. Bless that volleyball net's heart. If you guys would please do 